Tune into this week's On.net, where I have my good friend Sean and Brandon on talking about how to create user interfaces in C Sharp for .NET MAUI. So tune in. Welcome back, everyone, to another On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno. And if you're like me, you've probably heard a lot about XAML, XML-based markup to create user interfaces for .NET MAUI, but there's another way. In fact, you can build it all completely in C Sharp. So I brought on my good friends, Sean and Brandon, to talk about the .NET Community Toolkit for .NET MAUI. How's it going, guys? Hey, James, Hi, James. thanks Everybody for having good. us on. Yeah, it's good, to be, it's good to have you both on. And uh, uh, Brandon and I, we've only worked together for about 25 years. And Sean, you know, it's good to see you, good to see you back over here on, uh, on YouTube and on uh, Channel 9. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. So we know Brandon because he's on like all the videos all the time. So we don't care about him. But Sean, um, what's really awesome is that you've been a longtime contributor to, to Xamarin and now Don and Maui. You want to talk a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the community toolkits? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I'm Sean Lawrence. I'm a software engineer. Um, been working with .NET, building .NET apps and primarily WPF. Uh, for the majority of my career, and then that's eventually evolved to Xamarin, and obviously now onto Maui. Um, last year, I built a game in Xamarin Forms, which met, led me to end up consuming loads of value, or loads of uh, useful bits from the old community toolkit, um, and then ultimately ended up wanting to give back to that. So I ended up con contributing, and then things led on, and then I've become a maintainer of the toolkit itself. Very cool. And how about you, Brandon? Okay, maybe not everyone knows. <laughs> Thanks, James. Yeah, uh, my name's Brandon Minnick. I work as a developer advocate at Microsoft. And and like James mentioned, we used to work together back at Xamarin back in the day. So it's really exciting for me to see kind of Xamarin come to fruition, being being evolved into .NET MAUI, uh, be brought into the .NET SDK. And it just so happens to be that I'm one of those few weird people that like to make their uh, Xamarin forms and .NET MAUI UIs all in C Sharp. And so that's what we'll be talking about today and showing you how to do it. Very cool. Now we've done some previous episodes actually on the .NET Community Toolkit, which works on all .NET different applications. So if you're doing WPF or WinUI or anything like that, any, actually any .NET application, you can use it there. Specifically the MVVM stuff, so good. And then we just did an episode on just like introductory to to the, to the .NET MAUI community toolkit. So if you missed that, go see it. I'll put it down in the show notes and up over there on YouTube and all the things. But yeah, what is this you know, C-sharp markup thing? And why would I want to create things in C-sharp? Because you know me, I love my XAML, I love my data binding. Am I going to like miss out on all that stuff? Like, what's up? Good question. Well, if you want, we've brought some slides. And so let's pull up some slides. And I'll start with just a quick caveat that if, if you already know XAML, if, if you use XAML, you know it, you love it, you've been successful with it, great. This is, this is not an episode bashing XAML at all, but rather to show off that there is a way to do it without XAML, doing everything entirely in C-sharp. And we've created this NuGet package, this library called communitytoolkit.maui.markup that makes it even easier to make all your UI code in C sharp. Okay, so, so like the, you could already do it, right? Just like you could for Xamarin Forms. There is like a C sharp API, but this is like making you way more productive basically if you want to go that route because there are two different types of developers. Like when I transitioned from WinForms to WPF, like the XAML thing like clicked immediately for me like I got it, but I work with so many developers and I know both of you do too. It's like that that change is drastic and some people are just really uh, visual when it comes to like creating things in C sharp. Yeah. And I know for, for me personally, uh, when I joined Xamarin back when we were our small little startup, uh, I, I joined it cause I like C sharp. I like doing everything in C sharp. And then I uh, was introduced to this, to XAML. And I was like, nah, but I want to do everything in C sharp. I've never, I've never used XAML before. So it didn't make any sense to me. Uh, and so that's kind of, one of the well, one of the highlights we'll we'll show off on on a slide here with one of the bullet points, but um, yeah, let's get going. We'll show off all the fun things. Uh, you will notice there are a couple links at the bottom of these slides 
this link on the bottom right, codetraveler.io slash Maui hyphen markup is a web page that Sean and I put together where you can find everything from today's video. So including cool. the slides, links to the GitHub repo to look at the source code, the sample app that we made for the show today. You can find all of that there. And if anybody does have any questions, we have our Twitter handles down here on the bottom left. And that's the best way to get in contact with us. I am at the code traveler and Sean is at Finchington, neither of which include our name. So it's a little, little Nailed weird, it. little confusing. But. Nailed it. Yeah, I'll put all links down in the show notes. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, let's kick it off and uh, hand it over to Sean. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm sure if, uh, James, you, you know full well if you've dealt with XAML in the past, uh, refactoring things can actually become quite um, painful at best. Um, so obviously, we, when you're renaming things within C Sharp, we don't have that problem because the compiler can actually tell that there are, are references. Um, so if you decided to rename your class, your view model, or even your properties, you'll automatically get the refactoring done for you and, and managed for you from Visual Studio. There are, of course, tooling that toolings that have then provided the problem, uh, solved the problem. So you've got things like ReSharper or MFactor that that help in terms of the XAML uh, refactoring side of things. But that's clear that it, it is a pain point and someone has had sure. to try and solve that problem. So obviously with yeah. a quick benefit is there's less to have set up in order to get this kind of functionality. Yeah, I've also I've often, you know, had that issue where I like gave like a controller a name, for example, change it in my XAML, and then I got to go change all my other code all over the place. So it's, it's get it out of sync, basically, is easy to do. Yeah. 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 So get so get an easy win. Um, another one is uh, performance. So you do get slightly better performance when you create your UIs in C Sharp. And really what that boils down to is C Sharp code is compiled, whereas XAML is interpreted at runtime. So if you've done the XAML, you'll probably recognize there's that initialize component method. And that's what that runs at runtime. And that's essentially parsing the XAML that we've written. Now, there is the XAML compiler, and that definitely helps. Um, but XAML C only compiles some of the XAML. It doesn't get all of it. I should probably change that to most of the XAML, because uh, it is it is really good. Um, but anecdotally, we'll say back in the day, uh, before we had the XAML compiler, I, I did a little test where I had an app that I wrote the same UI twice, uh, once in C Sharp, once in XAML. And the C Sharp page loaded in about 70 milliseconds compared to 150 milliseconds for the XAML page. Now, that was before XAML C. Uh, the XAML compiler does get it pretty close, so it's mostly negligible, but the C Sharp UI will always load just a little bit faster. So if you want to like tweak and tune performance, basically, is what you're saying. And then also now, at least the compilation for XAML is on by default in all .NET MAUI applications. Uh, which is also uh, awesome. I think one thing too that sometimes I forget is like compiled bindings. Like there's actually kind of some other layers of things that you can do where like you may not have to do in C sharp, correct? Yep, yep. And compiled bindings will also help and that'll also help load things even faster as well. So I highly recommend those for XAML users too. You just got to remember to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've, I mean, I'm, I am a, a big XAML fan. Um, like as similar to you, James, I think it, it did just click when I started until you start to deal with these, these kind of obscure things like trying to mm. refer to a, a static or a constant. Um, I don't know if you can read that particularly well, but you see the, the automation ID there, how lengthy that is. I always have to look up the syntax in XAML to remember how to refer to a constant like that. Whereas obviously if you look at the C sharp equivalent down below, it's um, much more readable. Yeah, that makes some sense, right? Because in the XAML, you just don't have access to, you know, static variables. And what you're doing here is you like you have to actually like add a bunch of stuff to make that compilation or that interpreting part actually figure out where that stuff is. So it's it is pretty verbose. Yeah, and another another good example is converters. So mm. if you've ever wanted to tweak the the binding uh, result that comes back just a little bit. Um, XAML requires a lot of ceremony. We have to create a whole new class that implements iValueConverter. 
Um, then everything's objects, nothing's type safe, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, so we have to do casting and hope it doesn't crash our app. And at the end of the day, we finally get, we can do it with our bindings. So we have the is enabled binding here that uses our converter that we just initialized. Mm. Uh, in C sharp with our library, it's so, so much easier. Um, you can do it just in line with the binding. We have a couple parameters where you can put in a, a function. So we have the convert function here that'll just convert the, we're binding to the length of text of an entry. So if that length is not zero, then we'll convert that to the bool true. And likewise to convert back, um, if it is true, we'll convert it to either one or zero. And we just do it in line. So we just put in our little C sharp function here. We don't have to make a new interface. We don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. So converters become a lot, a lot simpler. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, and one, one big selling point I think we're, we're quite keen on is it potentially produces the barrier to entry. Because obviously if you're coming in to learn .NET MAUI, you're going to have to learn C sharp irrespective of whether you're going to use AML or not. And by removing the XAML element, you, that's one extra thing that you don't have to consider. If you think about um, all of the platform specific APIs that you're going to have to deal with potentially, um, MVVM would be a practice. So I guess um, Maui offers the potential to break out of that mechanism and use a different architecture. Uh, and then other things like asynchronous programming. So there are a lot of concepts that people are going to have to comprehend or learn on their journey to building an application. So if we can remove any parts of that. Makes definitely. sense. I always want to make things easier and not more complex, right? Yes, exactly. So as part of the um, work that we've been doing on the, the toolkit, we've uh, been trying to heavily document what's, what's available. So in terms of the markup, we we're showing off what, what 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 can be done guiding users through how to get started. So we'll show how to consume the package via NuGet and then how we can go in and actually start to use some some examples. So typically wherever we, we've got pages, we try to show how you could do it in the, the old way without having without using our package. So if you wanted to set up a binding to a text property on an entry. You'd have to create the entry, then we'd have to call set binding, and that which becomes quite verbose. Oh, very cool! And then below it is like the new thing. So like these really are extension methods, right? That you're and it are extensions to what it is that really improve the C sharp markup ability, basically. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. So like you say, so we we've removed a little bit of that. So we were saying we're going to bind our entry to a text property and the property of that we're going to bind it to. Very cool. So we, we give a brief overview, and then you, you can click around, and you can start to see that there's there's real, quite more complex uh, things that can be done, and you can break it down. So here's uh, providing a converter if we did the old way, um, as per Brandon's example, mentioning how you could do it with XAML. So if you've got something that you want to reuse across multiple controls, then there is some potentially value in creating that converter still. But then you've got the the inline that Brandon showed off where you don't have to create that. Oh, cool. That's really nice. I like that there's flexibility there. So if you did have a bunch of converters that you were using in XAML and you wanted to do a little bit of uh, both, you can choo pick and choose basically like what what works for you and your code. Exactly, yeah. yeah yes, because cool. I think I think primarily I've, I've been XAML based, but I think there are times when I do create C Sharp. So I do make use of this package now because it's certainly awesome. reduce the amount of code that you have to write. Um, cool. As another slight part of it, so as I mentioned, we we show off everything that's available within the C-sharp package itself. But wherever we're trying to write examples in terms of the toolkit that you, you spoke about with the rest of the team yesterday, the we then, what we do, so we show a piece of functionality that we offer, how you can use it within XAML, how you can then use it within C Sharp, and you can see that, that becomes really quite lengthy. And then we always already provide you a, a markup, and you can start to see uh -huh. how then it really starts to simplify things. 
That's very that's nice. Fantastic. Yeah, that's very cool. I feel like it's it's nice because like you're already using a tool the toolkit, you know. And if you're gonna create stuff in C sharp, why not use the C sharp markup too? And this kind of like it's it's like a nice uh, self promotion in a way, right? Like, hey, just so you know, this thing exists right over here, and it's like way <laughs> shorter. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think I think mark markup is um, Zam was a big part of well, well, the Xamarin days, and certainly part of Maui. So it's trying to bring attention to the package to show that there are different ways of doing it. You don't have to be stuck in, in XAML or even you could, you could mix and match between the two, as we said. Very cool. Thanks. Uh, and the only other thing is that, I mean, we're, we're working hard to get these doc, docs up and running, but um, feedback is, is definitely valuable in this because um, we're trying to make it as user friendly as possible in terms of function functionality. And then also, people were the docs as well. So if there is any feedback, we're more than willing to, or more than happy to receive it. Very cool. And are the docs open source as well? Like if someone found a bug and they make changes to it as well? They they are, yes. So in fact, we had someone the other day do the same thing. They reported a bug. So you can, if at the top of the page, there is a send feedback button, and I believe it will take you to be able to create feedback for that issue straight oh, cool. away. Oh, nice. Uh, and yes, we have, we have a, a Microsoft Docs repository up on uh, GitHub, which houses ours and some of the other ones like the MVVM and the .NET toolkits and the Windows toolkits. Um, sorry, this is all open source. People can contribute. Um, contributions are definitely welcome. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Come fix our typos. <laughs> <laughs> My that's typos. A, that's the, yeah, basically all brands. <laughs> or me. I, I mean, that's the best type of pull request, to be honest with you. I think, you know, a lot of people, they it, sometimes it's hard to get into open source. Like, oh, do I need to create a whole new feature? I need a thing. No, just like, you know, get in the docs, you know, update some code, some comments, things like that. Um, those things are super helpful. I know for me as a library creator, it it saves, saves me because it makes other developers' lives, uh, you know, better because they can read the docs instead of all my typos. <laughs> cool. Do you all have like uh you want to see it in action? What, what's the next steps here? I mean, we got some docs. We got some Absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. We, I have this open to Visual Studio code just because I like how it has a split for you, but it's .NET MAUI. You can use Visual Studio on PC. You can use Visual Studio for Mac. Um, but for looking at code side by side, what we have here today, this is just the the like the hello world app like when you create a .NET new Maui app mm. this is what it gives you you get this little hello world with a little click me counter pretty standard and so here on the right is the XAML that we get for free in the template and what we did today to kind of show show that side by side is we just took that same XAML and C sharpified it <laughs> so Got it. we have the same code from uh, a different class here on the left. And when we compare the two, I mean, obviously they're different, right? Like we have C-sharp versus XAML, different languages. We have to mm -hmm. uh, specify the class here. And now we're in the constructor for main page, whereas XAML, we do that up here. But once we kind of hide some of that, we can start to see the similarities. And so Right away, you'll see a scroll view, and inside of that scroll view is a vertical stack layout with, we have a spacing of 25, padding of 30. And so far, none of this is from our, <laughs> our markup library. The good stuff comes in here with these fluent extension methods. Okay. Uh, so here, when we add the children to this vertical stack layout, now we can start taking advantage of these extension methods that make it really easy to initialize our components in C Sharp. So for example, this label has text that says, hello world. It's got a font size of 32. Uh, we're centering things horizontally. And in C Sharp, we do the same thing. So we can say dot text, hello world, dot font of size 32, center horizontal. And that'll all boil down, both boils down to the same code. Mm. Uh, the really the only difference here is uh, the semantic properties. We are we're working on adding that. That'll be brought in soon, <laughs> depending on when you're watching this video. Maybe it already is brought in. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, um, everything you can do in 
XAML can also be done in C sharp, and that's our goal. So if you find a property that can't be initialized or initialized easily in C sharp with a nice fluent extension method, let us know. Uh, we're happy to add it in. We're trying to obviously hit off or knock off all the, the most common ones first, but for the most part, we got everything taken care of for this Hello World sample app. We even have, uh, we took the liberty of turning into some MVVM stuff too. So we've got some bindings where we bind to the labels text property and even do a little conversion here. Oh, cool. Where we take the count, which is an int in our view model, and then turn that into the string for the label text. So uh, yeah, lots of good stuff uh, in this this font method has a couple parameters like bold or italic. Let's see if will IntelliSense come up. Not prettily, uh, so, but that's where you can set your font size, your font families, bold or italic. And like Sean showed off in the docs, we have this size. So the image down here has a width request, height mm. request. Well, we figured why why type out all those letters? We'll just call it size. <laughs> and you can set your width size to 250 and your uh, height size to 310. So it, yeah, it makes, makes things really easy to do. And selfishly, I like it because it's also easy to read. Mm. Uh, it flows really nicely. Everything is kind of top to bottom, left to right, similar to how we're used to it in XAML as well. Well, I think one thing that's, that's nice here, right, is, is, well, the template, right? The file new is relatively simple. Like you showed the app, it's just like clicking buttons and some labels. You know, I think the thing that impresses me and I could imagine on more complex user interfaces are some of those nice helper methods that you just described, right? So actually the fonts where you're doing size and bold, or you're actually setting multiple properties on a single line of code. Same thing with the size. I think also when you talk about readability, it's, it's fascinating, right? Because central horizontal, that's actually not really what those words are in the property, right? Uh, but it's also in what it's assigned to, right? The horizontal options, which is center, which horizontal options, people may not even understand what that means, but they may understand center horizontally. And then I would say on top of that, I think one thing that you pointed out early is that, yeah, it's, it's different, but it's not completely foreign, right? So if you were going back and forth between XAML or you're coming from XAML and you would prefer C Sharp, for example, you know, you're gonna, naturally learn all those things in the C-sharp markup. Yeah, and, and also like Sean mentioned, you can you can do both. These aren't mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, even in the sample app for the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit, we have some content pages are done in C-sharp with this markup, and some content pages are done in XAML. So it's not all or one or the other. Uh, it might be easier sometimes to make a page in C-sharp one of the reasons we do it is so that we can inherit that page and leverage it um, mm -hmm. across multiple pages, which we can use C Sharp for that, where XAML makes that a little bit more tough. So yeah, try them out. You can use both. You can use one. You can use the other. That's OK. These are all just equally great options for our .NET MAUI developers. Well, I think you said it right. It, it's it's about choices and about productivity. So if you're a developer that loves XAML, go use XAML. If you're a developer that loves C Sharp, use C Sharp and the obviously the the markup extensions to be more productive. It's really cool to like see side by side and to walk through some of the the perks and benefits of why you might want to go this route. That's right. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brandon and Sean, for coming on. And what I'll do, of course, is put links everywhere in the show notes below if you're on YouTube or on the docs page over there to not only to Brandon and Sean on Twitter, to the GitHub repos, to the code samples and everything else. Thanks again, guys, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks, James. Thank you very much for having us. Awesome. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this week's On.net. I really appreciate it. You've made it this far in the video. If you're over on YouTube, you can go ahead and jam on that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to become part of the notification squad over here and you get notified every single time we put out a brand new video right here on YouTube. But that is gonna do it for this week's on.net. So until next time, I'm James Montemagno and thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>